This is Dr. Shannon Wong in Austin, Texas. We recently placed our first IC8 presbyopia correcting extended depth of focus lens implant this past week. I thought it would be enlightening to show you what the lens looks like in the operating room and through our operating room microscope and then let our first IC8 patient share with you his experience the day after receiving the IC8 lens to help him read up close without glasses. Now first in the operating room, the IC8 lens is stored in a glass bottle that resembles a bottle used to store a soft contact lens. The lens, which is immersed in a sterile solution, is attached to the rubber cap of the bottle. Once the cap is removed, we can see the IC8 lens attached to the cap in a prefabricated plastic mold. We inspect the lens injector and then the lens cartridge. Initially, we tried to remove the lens from the plastic receptacle by pulling on the haptic. The lens optic is tightly secured to the plastic and we are unable to free the optic from the plastic by pulling on the haptic. Therefore, we use our smooth forceps to liberate the optic from the receptacle by pulling on the peripheral edge of the IC8 optic, which works nicely. We then insert the IC8 into the lens cartridge, which has been filled with viscoelastic. The Bausch & Lomb representative advised us to have the leading haptic fold over the lens optic and then to ideally have the trailing haptic placed over the optic as well. So we try this maneuver. The IC8 is then advanced into the cartridge using smooth forceps. The lens cartridge is then placed via a tongue and groove fit. Confirmation of the proper docking of the lens cartridge into the injector is confirmed when we hear an audible click. Our usual primary incision diameter is 2.8 millimeters. The Bausch & Lomb cartridge requires a 3.2 millimeter incision, which we create by widening our 2.8 millimeter incision with our diamond care tome. The lens implant is slowly advanced into the eye. There is a silicone plunger that pushes the IC8 down the cartridge and into the eye. The silicone tip is under compression inside the cartridge and then expands slightly once inside the eye. My sense is that this lens can be inserted into the eye using the same injector system that we use for our panoptics lenses using a 2.8 millimeter incision. I can foresee the silicone tip of this injector potentially grabbing the iris in some situations. This is a close-up view of the lens through our surgical microscope. We can see the 1.36 millimeter pinhole aperture opening in the middle of the lens which is 6 millimeters in diameter. The outer diameter of the black filtering ring is 3.23 millimeters. Zooming in on the filtering ring which is embedded within the clear acrylic material of the lens we see that the ring has a slightly porous consistency with thousands of tiny holes within the ring. We have the patient look directly at the lights of our Zeiss Lumera T microscope to confirm that the lens is centered properly. You had the IC8 to your left eye, and let's just kind of look at this real quick. This on the left eye is your preoperative prescription, and it was done yesterday. Uh, what was the main problem you had with your left eye before surgery? Uh, I think I was at 2200 vision. I had to wear readers all the time just to to, to read my phone or, or really function. So other than exercising, I would have them on. So could you read your phone or your watch without reading glasses before surgery? No. And how about now? I can. And your right eye sees pretty good far away, correct? Yes. If you had to compare your right and left eye today for your far vision, is there a difference? Uh, I There's either no difference or the left is better. I, I can't, I, my, my far sightedness has improved dramatically. So if we're looking up at an eye chart, um, and you compare the quality of vision on those letters in the eye chart. Can you cover and uncover and 
which eye seems to see better? Or are they about the same? Uh, I would say the right is still better. That's fine. Because um, it was in better focus to begin with. And then looking in the room, do images look brighter from your right eye than your left eye? Or does it seem about the same? About the same. No dimming. No dimming. Okay, so then let's turn out the light. And now when you look around, how do, how do things seem dimmer from your left eye than your right eye? No. Interesting. Like looking at a, uh, a screen, computer screen, do things look dimmer from your left IC8 eye than your right? They seem to be the same. Very cool. So day one, your J1 to J2, which is like 2025, 20, 2030, 20, near before you were J16, which is like 20, uh, 2400. So good. Um, you feel good about it so far? Yeah. I'm okay. very excited about it. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Very easy experience. Great. So what does the lens implant look like through the slit lamp microscope? Here is our initial view. How clear of a view of the retina can we obtain using a 90 diopter lens through the slit lamp microscope? How does an OCT of the macula appear through the natural lens and through the IC8? How does an OCT of the optic nerve appear through the natural lens and through the IC8? In an undilated pupil, how does the view of the retina appear through the IC8 lens using an Optos California retinal imaging system. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to share our initial experience with our very first patient who received the IC8 Aphthera Presbyopia Correcting Extended Depth of Focus Lens Implant. He seemed to do well. Time will tell as we use this lens more frequently in other patients how effective it is and in which patients it seems to work the best in. I appreciate you taking the time to watch our video. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.